How you doing? It's Chow for your best mix of music, 98.4 Capital FM. And today I'm at the Nairobi Hospital and I'm joined by Dr. Waweru, an oncologist at the Nairobi Hospital. Thank you so much for joining me and giving me your time. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. Bad time lucky. And third time's the charm. <laughs> That's right. So it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Mm. The month of October is Breast Cancer it is, yeah. Awareness Month. And I think the first question that I'd like to know is what is the frequency of breast cancer uh, between in men and women rather? So, you know, start off by saying that you are miles ahead of lots of other people who think breast cancer is a woman's disease only. Yes, we get some men getting breast cancer, but the rate um, of detection for men is about 100 times less than women, if not greater. And in terms of um, incidents, I try not to bore our viewers with statistics, but I think we all know the rate of cancer generally is going up. And breast cancer is probably the most, um, so second most frequently diagnosed cancer in women in Kenya. And um, so just in this year alone, globally about 2.1 million women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. So huge numbers. Yeah, those numbers are, are you know, they're huge, like mm. you're saying. But what causes it? What are some of the causes of it? Million dollar, yeah. So I think that's the million dollar question, yeah. and there's a lot of simplifying cancer, and people want to attribute it to diet, environmental factors, and all of that is being looked into. Um, but I think the bigger thing that people ignore is number one, um, genetics. Mm -hmm. So genetic mutations happen, um, and we are all looking into why they happen for some women and not others that lead to breast cancer. Um, so not to confuse people, about 5 to 10 percent of women will get breast cancer because of their family history. So they have the um, genes, the BRCA genes, Angelina Jolie, mm -hmm. we all know about it. BRCA1 mm -hmm. and 2 increases your risk of breast cancer. You know, you've got an 80 percent chance of getting the disease if you have that gene. But that's such a small proportion of breast cancer patients. For the rest of us, mm -hmm. um, that is the subject of a lot of debate. But there are some things that are known to cause breast cancer or increase your risk of getting breast cancer. Um, and the thing is, a lot of these ones can't be modified. So the age at which periods, men are key, mm -hmm. um, and the age at which you get your menopause. So if you have your periods early and menopause late, you have a long time of estrogen circulating in the body and those hormones can increase the risk. Um, women who've had no children at all or who have children at a later date, um, women who don't breastfeed. So um, these are risk factors, but I'm sure you, you can appreciate it's not easy to change that sort of dynamic in a woman. Um, the oral contraceptive pill, and this is a touchy subject I yeah. know, um, unfortunately there's a small risk. About 1.2 times increase the risk of breast cancer if you take the oral contraceptive pill. Um, and then there are things that you can modify. So being overweight, you can change. Um, not smoking, exercise is really important. Um, yeah, I think that covers most of them. So lifestyle, you know, yeah. the smoking, the, the yeah. drinking of alcohol. If, I, if, that, if that were to be my lifestyle, would I be at a greater risk? You would. Okay. Uh, the thing with breast cancer is, um, yes, they contribute. So. Um, being sedentary, so no exercise, smoking, drinking, for sure, that increases your risk. But we all know that the bigger thing is what we call the endogenous hormones. So how long you have estrogen circulating. So, you know, women who have the um, periods late and then have children early, breastfeed for a long time, that group of women have been shown to have a lower risk of breast cancer. It, it feels like all men and women could be at risk. Yep. Of, of cancer, which brings in breast cancer in this case, which brings in the question of screening. Mm. What is screening yeah. and why should we screen? So I'll just differentiate the two. So there's um, breast self-examination and that everyone should be doing at least once a month. Um, formal screening is mammograms, which have been, I think, our greatest weapon against breast cancer at this point in time is mammograms. Um, Different people would say different things. Some people would say from the age of 40 onwards, you, you should start having your mammograms. My personal belief is closer to 50. So 47 and above, once every three years, women should have mammograms. Um, and the purpose of mammograms is they can detect breast cancers before they are palpable, so before you and I can feel them. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, the sooner the breast cancer is detected, the easier it is to treat. So for example, 
stage one breast cancer has an almost 100% five year survival rate. Mm -hmm. And then it drops. By the time you get to stage four, it's a 27% five year survival rate. So I think the sooner we detect the problem, it's very clear the easier it is to treat and survive. Is it painful because... Screening? Well, oh, it, I mean, there's somebody oh. watching right now saying, like, well, she just said I'm going to have to screen myself. Is, yeah. it, is it painful? So, um, so breast self-examination, of course, isn't. Mammograms are slightly uncomfortable. But I think for once a year for the high risk patients, so once every three years, um, it is worth the few minutes of discomfort um, of having a mammogram. Okay. Yeah. And both men and women should do the self-examination? Yes, okay. but men, uh, mammograms, just because of the anatomy, aren't, yeah. um, can't be done. But yes, anyone can do breast self-examination. I think the thing about men is Again, the risk factor is very, very low, um, just to emphasize this here. Um, but um, I think men who have a strong family history of breast or ovarian cancers, or if there's any other man who's had breast cancer in their family, now those are the people we would say self-examine. Mm -hmm. But for every other man, I think there's other diseases for them to look out for prostate cancer, testicular cancer, so that sort of examination should be going on. So the emphasis on self-examination is about women. But more on women. More on women, but for men who have high risk and they would know about it because of their family history, then yes, we'd encourage them. And you can get your partner to help you do the self-examination. Yes, so yes, yeah. just last week a patient came to me because her husband had detected the lump. No more details, but yes. So Dr. Wawari, could you please take us through a self-breast examination mm. and what we're looking at? Yeah, so whilst we do this, I think I'll just quickly mention the commonest signs and symptoms of breast cancer. But if you feel a lump, don't panic. 20% of lumps are malignant, they're going to be benign. So what is malignant? Yep. Yeah, so sorry, pardon the medical jargon. Um, so uh, eight out of 10 breast lumps will not be cancerous. Um, they will be benign or non-cancerous lumps. Um, only two out of 10 will be something serious. So if you feel a lump, please don't panic. Um, other signs and symptoms are changes to the um, skin of the breast. So sometimes you can get dimpling that is new for you, um, changes to the nipple, inversion or discharge. Mm -hmm. um, and people often forget that you can sometimes get breast cancer, not often, but starting off as a lump in the armpit as well. So, so commonly uh, breast lumps, changes to the color and texture of the skin, um, nipple inversion, discharge that's unusual, um, and sometimes just an odd rush that you've never experienced before. Um, so we're saying not all of these symptoms equal cancer, um, but should be looked at by a professional. So in terms of breast self-examination, it's best to do it a few days after your period when your breast isn't as tender. Um, you can do it either lying down or standing up in front of a mirror, um, whichever suits you. Um, and essentially it's just um, there's different ways of doing it, but how I would do it or regularly do it is you want to use the flat of your hand. So we'll do it together. Okay, so I can use this one. Yeah, are you right handed, left handed? Right handed. Oh. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> so flat of your hand and then just start off in one area okay. and just work your way around the breast. Mm. As if like in a clockwise fashion. Okay. And then in the center as well. Um, I think and the key is to get to know how your breast feels yeah. um, so that if ever there's any changes, you'll be the first one to detect it. So breast self-examination, I think is the greatest weapon women have in terms of detecting the disease. So I feel something over here, like it feels round and kind of feels, well I shouldn't be pressing it that much, but it does feel like bumpy. Should I have a, should I have a feel? Yeah. We can swap over. Tell me. Did I detect that right? So. Uh, at in, the bottom. Yeah. The bottom. So actually, it's a little bit higher. Sorry. <laughs> but there is a lump here. Yeah, this there's is like it's a okay. quiz that you didn't know you were having. <laughs> but there, there is a lump. For Success. sure there is. There's a lump just in the center there okay. and slightly up. Ah. Um, so, here as well. but the key, like I said, is to know what your normal breast feels like. Mm -hmm. Everyone is different. Mm -hmm. And so if you're doing this on a monthly basis, if there's any changes, you'll be the first person to detect it. Yeah. Yeah? These are just a few representations of um, lumps that you might be able to feel. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm not sure this is very helpful, but you know, the bigger the lump, the easier it is to feel. But we're hoping if you're examining yourself early, you will start, you know, even a pea sized lump, you'll, right. be, you'll be able to detect, um, if, if that makes sense. And then that's when you get to operate to remove the lump. So, so once you detect the lump, um, that's a useful question, what happens next? So you would go and see a qualified doctor and they would examine you again. And if they feel the lump is suspicious, needs more investigations, um, they would do, the first thing is imaging, so a mammogram and an ultrasound scan. And that gives us a lot more information than what you felt with your hands. Then the next step is something called a biopsy where a small piece of the lump is taken out and analyzed um, to detect whether it's cancerous or not. If it is cancerous, um, you are then referred to a breast oncology surgeon or an oncologist mm -hmm. to discuss the treatment options. Mm -hmm. um, so in the short period of time, I couldn't go through all the treatment options, Absolutely. but most people would have in this order, surgery first, and then depending on the post-op results, what we call histology, um, there often is a need for things like chemotherapy, radiotherapy, hormone treatment, and targeted agents like drugs like Herceptin. But you know, that's a top for another day. Um, but I think it leads us on nicely into saying um, that the reason breast cancer survival is going up um, is because of early detection and the improvement of treatments that we have. Um, so I have had lots of people who have, so patients who knew that they had breast cancer, but delayed coming to treatment for sometimes 18 months. And that's because of a lack of awareness of the fact that we have got good treatments and caught early, you can be cured. And even for, like I said, stage four cancer, breast cancer where the survival is lower, there's treatments that can keep people well for much longer than 15 years ago, for instance. So it isn't scary, um, you know, don't hide away. If you have a lamp, let someone know. Um, there's good treatments, um, affordable treatments that can be given. And like you said, the breakthrough in medical science means yeah. that you can have quality life. Yes, yeah. even for very advanced disease. Okay. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching. I've got to say cha right now from the Nairobi Hospital. Remember, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Do yourself a favor and start checking yourself out. Ciao.